everyone. Welcome to the Whitlam Leisure Centre in Liverpool in Sydney's southwest for the 1995 Continental Basketball Association Grand Finals. 62 teams have done battle in the CBA this season. Three conferences of men's competition, two in the women, women but uh, all the cross-conference battles are over and what it's done is thrown up all South Conference Grand Finals. In the men's, it's the defending champions, the Ballarat Miners against the Frankston Bayside Blues. This is how the two teams got here. They've met twice, uh, three times this season. Frankston have a 2-1 record over Ballarat, but uh, in the quarterfinals in the national competition, Frankston disposed of Knox by five points. Then, as we saw last week, a solid victory over Rockhampton from the Northern Conference, while Ballarat, they disposed of Southern Districts from the Northern Conference by 20 points in the quarterfinals, then down Nunawading, the Eastern Conference champions, to uh, win a place in consecutive grand finals. In, Frank's, in fact, the Ballarat Miners have played in six of the last seven CBA grand final contests. My co-commentator is AIS and Australian under-20 coach Gordy McLeod. Gordy, uh, that grand final in the Southern Conference, just five points separated the teams. Frankston taking it from Ballarat, and it, they didn't hit the front until about 30 seconds to go with a three-pointer. Expect something similar here for the national championship? Yeah, I'm, I'm expecting a blockbuster. I mean, these two teams have proved uh, over the year that they are the best two teams, and they, they both deserve to be there. Uh, when you look at uh, the, the two teams, how they match up, they match up very evenly. I mean, it's it's going to be the, the defensive specialist against the, the run and gun style of Ballarat. Uh, Frankston are going to really have to, to, to play a very good defensive game to have a chance, but they've proved they can do that most of the year. We look uh, at the results, the time, two, three times they've met. 90-point game, Frankston have won. 100-point game, Ballarat have won. Well, that's, that's the way it's got to be because uh, Ballarat like to get out and they like to run and open the game up. They've got some good scorers from the three-point line. They've got an inside game in Cooks. Franks, on the other hand, more grinding half-court game and uh, a more probably tougher defensive team. But, I mean, they're going to have to really shut down the, the strong Ballarat players in Cooks, Hayes and Lowry and watch out for Campbell. But it's going to be a blockbuster. It's going to be a great game. We're going to get the uh, teams introduced to the crowd now. Greg Hendricks is your PA announcer. The Frankston Bayside Blues. Tonight their squad is number four, Troy Muhlenberg. Number seven, David Anderson. Number ten, Matthew Cotter. Number twelve, Matthew Vidoni. Number fifteen, Peter Wayne. Number twenty-two, Steve Blackley. Number twenty-four, Albert Springs. Number 25 is Steve Connolly. Number 32 is the skipper. Welcome, Mark Ridgway. Here we go. Number 33, Reese Newsom. Number 42 is Adam Burke. And number 55 is Tim McQuiston. Their coach is Bill Runchy. The assistant coach is Brian Blackley. And their team manager is Max Burrows, the Frankston Bayside Blue. And now for Ballarat, the Win TV Miners, attempting to secure back-to-back -back national championships, please welcome number four, Eric Hayes. Number five, Matt Copping. Number six, Grant has the keys. Number eight, Matthew Nunn. Number nine is Chris Roots. Number 10, Damon Lowry. Number 12 is Matthew Sheehan, the skipper. In singular, number 14 is Eric Cooks. Number 15 is Daniel Sutton. 20, Shane Brown. 21, Dion Collard. 33, Matthew Campbell. Their coach is the experienced Brendan Joyce. The assistant coach is Eric Lowe and the team manager is Dennis Rowe. Ladies and gentlemen, the Ballarat win TV Miners. So while the teams go through their final warm-ups, let's take a look at the CBA National Women's Final that preceded this one. Launceston versus Adelaide. Launceston won through to the grand final, defeating uh, Mackay from the Northern Conference, 88 to 63. Adelaide defeated Southern Districts from Brisbane, 102 to 91. So it's a rematch of the Southern Conference grand final, which Launceston won. Launceston have won seven on end coming in to the grand final. Adelaide started off the season in very hot form. So no doubt these two deserve to meet in the grand final. But at halftime, it's Launceston leading Adelaide by 10 points. Adelaide have been unable to stop the Launceston guns of Debbie Black and Mandy Bonney, your commentator. 
for these highlights, Bridget Tilly with Australian Opals captain Robin Ma. Here's Black. Bonnie. Black and Bonnie are firing in this corner. Oh, it's hot. 22. Hannah Turner for Adelaide. Here's Boya. Oh, well, Boya and Bonnie going a little bit there. What a shot from and Draper. Black. Hassled by Draper. Black does well. Draws a foul. Penetration that hurt Adelaide so dearly in the foul. first half is starting to haunt them again in the second. Second personal foul. Debbie Black on the line. Shooting two. Asks for a bit of help. She doesn't need it usually from the line. Debbie no, Black. she's an excellent foul shooter and um, she does ask for help every time she uh, goes to the line. One thing about having a player like Debbie Black, it can almost be dangerous because if you lose her from injury or she's 28, she's got a long way to go, yeah. It can be so, leave such a big hole in the side, but she's here tonight and she's doing well for them. For Wilson, the top for Draper, she goes for three and makes it. What a nice shot. Very Joe Draper. It's her second one for the quarter. A nice dish up to the top and Draper makes the shot. Lakita, hassled well by Bayer. Starting to put Shelly the pressure Kay. on. Lakita. Bonnie for three. In fact, it was Bonnie, yeah. The left hand went up there. Mandy Bonnie. And a turnover. That's not what Adelaide needed. They really needed to come down and, and have a have a play that they could get a basket or a good shot from. It seems every shot they're taking is under pressure. And Black decides Black to gets try a great to three. Turner. Black on her. And the pressure from Black, but Adelaide's still with it. Here's Boya. And the threes are definitely coming into the game right now. It's a fourth three in about a minute. Neil Glidden, the coach. This is Boya for Draper. He Clark's back in the three. game for Adelaide. Turner, Wilson. Wilson inside. And it's a block. It's called a blocking foul. The foul's on Shelley Clay. Here it is. Hmm. Well, Close one again. Brenda Wilson's done shooting. well for the line so far. She do it again. Still 15 points. And a turner. Nice lob in for Mandy Bonney. No help from Mandy behind. Bonnie. Has 30 points. 30 points for Mandy Bonnie. Shot there from Megan Clark. Megan Clark for two. To Bonnie. And good hands in there from Boya. She comes away with it. Well deserved. Draper. The three. Draper yes. makes the three. Three, two. Draper with a three. Chase that one, Mandy Bunny, and she does. Settles it up for Launceston. Share it for Black. Black controls the game again. Oh, Ooh. and a hit. Terry Jo Draper in the face. Got her beauty. Bunny. In for Black. Nice. Great pass for Mandy Bunny. Belinda Wilson. Inside for Ayres. Doesn't drop, and it's all over. Uh, yeah. Debbie Black and the Launceston players are absolutely ecstatic. And in the end, a fairly comfortable win to Launceston and Robin Ma for a team that didn't do so well in the regular season. They know how to pull out in the big ones, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they certainly do. Their experience really showed through in the end and the, the young Adelaide, you know, development group, really, they were. Um, you know, they tried and, you know, they got within three and a couple of times, but they just didn't have the goods at the end. And Debbie Black, a great game. Oh, fantastic game. Mandy Bonnie, Debbie Black. Bukita, I mean, they, all the Launceston girls played extremely well. 
So in the end, it's Launceston, the CBA women's grand finalists for 1995. They take the title 110 to 96 over Adelaide. Taking a look at the starting fives now for the men's grand final. One change to the Frankston starting five from last week. And uh, he hasn't played a lot of basketball of late, but uh, Tim McQuiston comes back into the starting five for Peter Wayne in the uh, front court with Troy Muhlenberg, their top scorer this season. Over 30 per game. Last week's MVP, Albert Springs in the middle. Bruce Newsom, the point guard. Steve Blackley with him in the back court for the Ballarat Miners. Grant Keyes up front with Eric Hayes and Eric Cooks in the centre their scoring machine he's uh, averaged 33 and a half points per game this season Damian Lowry the very busy and talented point guard and in the backcourt with him is Matthew Campbell referees are John Payne and Scott Butler in the light blue it's the Frankston Bayside Blues and they control the tip so it's Steve Blackley bringing down the ball down the court against Damon Lowry now, Muhlenberg, who averages 31 and a half points per game against the Miners this season. Can't get off to the start he was looking for. The ball wrestled away from Tim McQuiston. So it's Lowry down court and left alone for three. Miners not getting away to the start they wanted. Hayes hands the ball off to Campbell, and there's the first points for Ballarat. Yeah, that's just the, the start that uh, Ballarat wanted, and uh, get, a, get out some of those nerves that both teams will have. McQuiston to uh, Newsom, who uh, also is one who enjoys playing against the Miners. 23 and a half points per game this season for Newsom. Here he is. That's five above his season average. And there he is knocking down the first two-point basket. Yeah, good penetration into the paint for the pull-up jump shot. It'll be interesting to see how Frankston start tonight because uh, McQuiston's in the starting lineup, whereas Peter Wayne started last week. So it might take them just a little while to get their, their rhythm. McQuiston. Out to Newsom, but the Miners back quickly. So it's Frankston setting up. Around the McQuiston scene, Newsom very busy. Basket will count, he's fouled and will go to the stripe. Yeah, well, there was a good pick there by uh, Tim McQuiston at the top of the key there that, uh, that freed up Newsom for the drive to the basket. And uh, you can see it here, a good screen there. He drives hard, gets a bit of a bump there by Hayes and makes the two. A, a very nice uh, pick and roll at the top of the paint there. Reese Newsom hasn't missed yet as his team three points in front. Well, Frankston uh, have got to a good start here and uh, they'll, they'll want to try and slow Ballarat down and force him into the half court game because this is where they'll be able to, to get their help defense a lot better. Nice so basket. Eric there. Hayes scores his first basket. One of the veterans in this Ballarat team course enjoyed that championship last year Springs taking it all the way batted away by Grant Keyes setting away Lowry Keyes follows up sees the opening nice strong move to the basket the rebound from McQuiston yeah, Ballarat will want to make that, but you'll see Ballarat push the ball at Frankston all night because they'll, they push the ball. It mightn't be in the first quarter, but the fourth quarter, it'll take their toll on the bigger Frankston team. Muhlenberg launches three. Falls for Campbell. He puts the foot to the floor. Hayes. Well, that's, that's typical Ballarat game. Get the ball, push it down the floor. Spread it around and then look to take the quick shot and force it the opposition. So Miners back in front by one. Nearly three minutes played in the first quarter. Four 12-minute quarters in the CBA. Wanted the uh, travel there, Larry, on Newsom. Albert Springs. Now to Muhlenberg. Working very hard on him, Hayes. And taking the errant shot it's Eric Cooks Campbell coming down quickly now the hand in from Blackley well there's typical Ballarat play they'll get after you at the defensive end they'll force a bad shot you can see a nice handoff there by Matt Campbell to Keys, and that was all because of the good defense at the other end of the floor and that's the way the Ballarat like to play they, they crank up the D they'll take a few risks 
force you to take some poor shots, then they'll get the ball and they'll run. This is looking good. Okay, he's a 56% free throw shooter in the national playoffs. The team shooting at it at 71% from the line. Frankston at 67%, but that was uh, basically because of a poor free throw shooting performance last week. Ballarat, you can see there, they're uh, looking like they're going to want to up the tempo and put some pressure on from the foul shots. They pressed a bit up the floor, so you can see that they want to crank the game up and play it at a faster pace. Keys, Garling, Mudenberg, looking for someone inside, but uh, good defence on Springs. He can't get the rebound after Blackley missed the shot. Lowry now. Looking to extend that lead of the Miners. Damon Lowry comes up short, but he's fouled. Well, tough move there. But you can see again, you know, the Ballarat defence is having a very good effect at the moment. Frankston aren't into their half-court game at the moment. And a few poor shots. I mean, that shot by Blake is not really his strong point. Probably a little bit outside his range. But Ballarat rebounded the ball well and then pushed it down and attacked him again. Damon Lowry averaging 27 points against the Blues this season. Let's see if they press this time. Yeah, they're, they're pressing up the floor again, extended the defence. Ball movement to Blackley, hand in from Lowry. And a hands foul called by referee Butler. To me, Frankston just look a little bit Against flat at the moment. They just look a little bit tired, they look a little bit heavy in their legs. Maybe because, uh, you know, Ballarat is a very athletic His team. And uh, it might, it might, that might be the reason. It might just look that way. McQuiston, out to... Springs, who hasn't got in the game as yet. Key's guarding him. Top of the key. Now, setting the screen for Muhlenberg. Very tenacious defence early on from the Ballarat Miners. Yeah, and they're switching everything too, Peter, which is making nice things part. a bit tough. Pete inside with a big block. Coming from Cooks. Three on two here. Key's the reverse. Very nice play there by by Ballarat to push the ball down the floor and finished off very nicely by Keyes. Ballarat are switching a lot here on, on defence and causing some problems here. See, It's a 9-0 run that the Miners are on. Muhlenberg looking to try and end that if he can. Newsom being bothered by the nuisance Lowry. Springs launching three. Hit one last week in the... Uh, semi-final so why not and that's broken that run from the miners yeah well they needed that frankston and probably ballarat would have been pretty happy with uh with albert taking that shot there because that's not a strong point of his game but like you said peter no, made one last week so he must be feeling it again tonight and peter wayne comes in now the starter last week mcquiston Sitting yeah, well, down six, after uh, some four minutes of basketball. You can see here Lowry got caught, uh, Springs got caught with Lowry. And a big, big three there. But, but Springs got caught with Lowry there and Damien Lowry took him to the basket, got fouled. And from the ignition play, the ball came in bounds and he hit a big three. Springs fouled by Keys as he drives hard. Well, that's Albert's strength, Peter. He likes to to isolate his man and then take him to the basket. So Ridgeway, the captain, comes in for the Bayside Blues. Blackley sitting down. The two very astute coaches here tonight, so it's going to be very interesting. Springs. Keys came in, forced him to try and lay it in high off the glass. The lob all the way to Keys, who's very busy early on, but there's the travel along the baseline. Against Hayes. Good penetration in the zone, though. Wayne. There's the foul from uh, Sheehan. Foul there against number 12. The Ballarat are making Frankston uh, earn everything down here. You can see there they're putting a lot of ball pressure on. And that's uh, that's forcing Frankston a little bit out of their uh, out of their half court game, making him go that few steps extra than they normally go. And uh, it's having the right effect. They they haven't found a hole at the moment, and these two foul shots will be, be crucial to get them running again. Mark Ridgeway only makes one of them, but Kristen gets in the rebound. 
under five minutes to go in the first quarter. Wayne into Springs, going to work hard against Cooks. Keeps it alive, only for Sheehan. Open floor, Lowry. We'll be worrying at times here for Bill Runchy. His team is really struggling at the offensive end here, and I think what they have to do is they've got to get to come up with some nice, strong baskets. They've also got to pick up their defense. Lowry not letting Newsom get any latitude at all. And Kristen needs some help here. Looks after it well. Ridgeway goes hard, and he's fouled. Well, that's what Bill Runch would be after there, and he's been up clapping on there because they've come up dry from the perimeter, so they need to they need to attack more inside. You can see he gets in here, and uh, Cooks comes over late. He's not there and, and gets called for the for the foul. That, but that's what Franks will need to do. If they can't hit the perimeter shots, they're going to have to look to attack a little bit more inside. And with two fouls, Eric Cooks sitting down. Plenty of Frankston fans have uh, driven up for this game. They were at a little bit. Less to drive for their fans, but uh, the planes were full as well. Mark Ridgeway is disappointed. The yeah, captain. a little bit of frustration there, and uh, they need to loosen up a little bit. First points for a while. Well, the wings are 10 feet, are they? In all <laughs> the stadiums, so they just got to loosen up a little bit here. Sheehan. What about the three-pointer? Lowry doesn't take long to think about it and knock it down. Yeah, well, that's what uh, Brendan Joyce would be very happy about that because uh, they're going to play that zone there. They've got to be prepared to hit the perimeter, the the perimeter shots. And, uh, and it's going to be very important for, for the, the Ballarat team to do that. They've got plenty of good shooters from the perimeter, though, so they won't be scared to take them. Lowry has uh, double figures already. He's hit both those two-pointers for the Miners. Muhlenberg has been right. kept quiet until now. Yes, and uh, Franks will lead him to, uh, to cut loose a little bit. Three and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Here's Lowry. He was very impressive against Nana Wadding. You can see Frankston here now matching up. They're in their matchup zone, passing players off. Ballarat will have to get some good ball reversal and some penetration. Campbell takes it in. In his way with Springs. Oh, oh, Hayes got around Springs. Yeah, beautiful shot there. He was sort of playing for the foul there and uh, it didn't get called. He was forced to shoot it, but he made a nice shot. Nine point lead for the Ballarat Miners. Here's Newsom. He's got rid of Lowry here. Got the foul as well. Can't believe it. Yeah, nice play, but uh, Ballarat's forced him to put it on the floor and he was forced to go into the paint there, but he's, he's made a nice play there. You can see here, he's, he's, he's forced in here, he's driven low. Keys comes across there, gives him a bump. Good Didn't body like control to finish it off. Grant Keys, but it was there. So the three-point play from Reese Newsom. Yeah, he's playing well for him at the moment. He's come ready to play tonight. Sometimes it's the case, isn't it? Some players like playing in certain opposition. Ballarat is one team that East Newsom enjoys himself playing against. <laughs> it's all stuck in the hand there for a moment or two keys. I think it's Muhlenberg that's called for the foul. Hands. Yeah, he's asking for a double dribble there. Oh, and, uh, the he might be right, I'm, I'm not sure. But you can see uh, Frankston in their zone there. And they're in foul trouble, so they're going to be shooting bonuses all the time here. It changes from a 1-2-2 two, two, to a 2-3, and you'll notice Muhlenberg come off the baseline every so often there to match up on the perimeter shooter. Grant Keys at the line. The second time in this game. Miners have missed just the one free throw. Certainly the early ascendancy is with the Ballarat team. They're pressing up after the uh, made foul shot. That's a game to try and kick Frankston up a gear and get him out of their half-court game. He's way into Springs. Hayes really working hard to deprive Albert Springs. Nice big left hand though. He had to shoot it over some tall timber there. That's his bread and butter. One bounce to the middle, spin to the baseline and off the glass.
Six points the difference. Under two minutes to go in the first quarter. He's to Campbell. 21 is Dion Collard. Campbell, Collard still free on the right wing. No problems, Matthew Sheehan. The bench is coming up well for Ballarat too. It's one thing Frankson must do is respect Ballarat's bench, especially Thank if you, they start you. to make a couple because they can shoot the ball from the three-point line. Oh, nice drive Matthew there by Ridgeway. Ridgeway so it'll fade away from the captain. It's red hot, 90 seconds out from... Seven points the difference, and the Miners have hit all their three three-point attempts and the travel against uh, an unbelieving Eric Hayes. Yeah, Brendan Joyce not very happy about that call. You said two wily customers controlling the destinies of their teams from the bench, Brendan Joyce and Bill Runchy. Yeah, well, Brendan's been known to be a, a fiery player in his day, and I'm sure he'll take that into his coaching. In his third year at the uh, Minor Dome, and, of course, coached them to the national championship last year. Ridgeway missing. Good look and pass from Eric Hayes. Running the floor very well, the Ballarat Miners. Sheehan decides to pull it out. So Frankston slowed Ballarat down a little bit into the, into the half-court game. That's Campbell the launches the three. Oh, they haven't missed from out there. Well, they're capable of shooting like that, Pete, and, and Frankston are going to be very wary of their, their three-point shooters. They gave the three-pointers pointed to the wrong team there. It's 29 to 19, the score. Into the last 15 seconds. Ten points in front are the Ballarat Miners. They look to try and get this up at about the six-second mark, five-second mark. Near three, this is going to be big. <laughs> not that time. Roos nearly tips it back in. They're not going to get a chance to get the shot away. <laughs> well, they controlled the tempo and just about gave all their bench a run at the same time, the Ballarat Miners, and they've got a ten-point lead. So Hayes jumps against Springs. Keys off to Campbell. Hayes. Campbell for three. They only missed one in the first quarter. And as you said, Gordy, these rings are tight and it's coming back a long way off the iron. Especially when you shoot from the three-point line, it's going to come out nice and wide. Keys takes it strong. Beautiful running hook shot. And that's exactly what uh, Brendan Joyce said. He wants to attack this zone from inside. You can see it here. It goes in the keys here. He knows he's more agile than McQuiston. Puts it on the floor and makes a nice running hook. A great play. Newsom trying to get something happening for the Blues. Muhlenberg, only one field goal in the first quarter. They're going to need him to fire up a little bit for him. Springs hit one from out there in the first quarter, and the fact that he's taking them is, uh, well, worrying for Frankston. Yeah, a bit, bit of frustration there, and uh, Brendan Joyce would be very happy about that, that sort of shot. So the Blues come up empty-handed again. They're back to man-to-man man now. through Campbell. Couldn't get it out. Blackley tips it down. Nice pass to the running Muhlenberg oh, from Albert Springs. That's exactly what they want. They forced a turnover there and they, they ran on Ballarat. You can see here, he gets off to the races, makes a nice finger roll. So Frankston have gone back into man to man because uh, Ballarat are dominating the game offensively and defensively at the moment. And Bill Runchy feels he has to change things up. Lowry guarded by Springs. He feeds the ball into Keys. And there's that rebound for Keys. Open shot with the left hand. Hayes comes in and hits it out of bounds. Well, if Frankston are going to get back into this game, they're going to have to start playing better defense and they're going to have to rebound the ball. Sure, offensively they have to loosen up a bit, but the first thing they've got to do is stop Ballarat. Looks a little bit like the uh, Frankston-Rockhampton semi-final last week. Only the, the boots on the other foot this time for the Blues. They're the ones not rebounding the ball. Down by 13 on the glass. And there's another turnover. Sheehan, him out to Campbell, but pass wasn't good enough for him to get a shot away. Lowry just slowing the tempo down for the Ballarat team. We're going to run a set play here. The 233s, Campbell and Newsom. 
Keys goes hard and draws a cheap foul. You can see they're isolating Keys because McQuiston's matched up on him and, and they know, Ballarat know, that the Keys is a lot more mobile than McQuiston. If he can get him away from the basket here, you can see him here, McQuiston flows out, Keys just blows past him and then Muhlenberg gets a, a cheap hands foul having to help out. So Ballarat at the moment are spreading him out isolating their players and then attacking the, the biggest slow players of Frankston. And there's McQuiston sitting down again. And Wayne coming in. Keyes hasn't miss, missed yet from the line. Keyes is a quite achiever for Ballarat throughout the year. He's, uh, he's been getting some good numbers here. Yes, averaging 18 and a half per game in the regular season as Blackley goes hard and gets fouled by Keyes. Basket will count. That's a bit of an inspirational play. Same again, Ballarat presses up the floor. Frankston attack it through the middle. Dish it off to Blackley. He took it the hole nicely. Blackley, two points so far. Couldn't make the bonus there, but uh, keyway violation against Ballarat. So they're keeping that 10-point buffer, the Ballarat Miners. Frankston will be looking to get a stop here and get this, uh, get the get the score under 10 points here and then start to graft away. Yeah, foul from Wayne. Frankston. Taking it hard, Eric Hayes. You can see Frankston having trouble though. The quicker Ballarat plays, they spread them out, get them on the perimeter, and Peter Wayne can't stay with Eric Hayes out in the perimeter there. 30 years of age, Eric Hayes. Frankston has gone zone out of bounds. That's exactly what they did last last week. Good mixture of experience and the local youth for Ballarat Miners team and the offensive foul called against the 19-year-old Matthew Sheehan. Well, Brendan Joyce not happy there. No, he? maybe he's right. Yeah, it's a, a tough Second call, and uh, the referee had to make the split-second call, and, and Blackley made the referee make a call there by going to the floor. Two fouls on Sheehan. Cooks, we haven't seen a lot of him. He's picked up three quick fouls. Keyes has three. Wayne goes back after his shot, but it's Keyes that gets the rebound. Campbell away. The thing that's pressed me at the moment about Ballarat is that they're a smaller team, but they, they're out rebounding, for instance, through sheer determination. Yes, on average, two centimetres shorter are Ballarat. And Albert well, Springs doesn't like the call from referee Payne. Yeah, well, that's an unusual match up there, isn't it? The point guard with Albert Springs marking on the perimeter, and Damien Lau is going to take it out him all night there. And, and Brendan Joyce will come. You can see there, he put it on the floor. He's got a call for a blocking foul. Lowry feeding it inside. Keys comes up short. Oh, nice rebound. That's Matthew Sheehan just showing perfectly how Ballarat are dominating the glass here. Well, the Franks are going to stay in that zone when they go out of bounds. They've got to rebound the basketball. Three pointers not going down for them in the second quarter. It's three misses since the break for the Miners. Still 10 points the difference. Eight minutes to go. First half. Muhlenberg, the dish inside to Albert Springs. Dumping it down when everyone thought he was going to shoot it. And there could be trouble here too because uh, when that happened, it landed on Keys and uh, Hayes was pushed in the Keys here and he could be in some trouble. This, this could be a bit worrying time here for Ballarat if Keys has hurt himself. So it's Blackley, Newsom, Springs, Muhlenberg and Wayne on court for Frankston and has it's a minute or two into this second quarter. Lowry and Sheehan. Campbell. Cooks and Hayes for Ballarat.
Sheehan shooting it over the top of Springs. Muhlenberg gets the rebound, so that will please his coach. He needs a guard to help him. The Springs on halfway. One thing Frankston did there, exactly what Bill Runchy said. We've got to stop the ball going into the high post there and just try and keep him on the perimeter. If they can do that, it'll, it'll slow Ballarat down. Peter Wayne, this will certainly even things up. It's Blackley getting in for the rebound, but just losing the grip on it. Eight points, no lead at all. Seven minutes into the second half, but it's all of a sudden. The first three-pointer goes down from Eric Hayes, and that brings it back out to 11. The Ballarat are going for it. They know you can see here good penetration by Larry. Dishes out to Hayes, and it's a nice, nice bucket there from the three-point line. They've changed it to a half-court trap here. You can see him trapping into the corner. Peter Wayne, good quickness to get away from that. Nice ball movement from the Blues. Peter Wayne gets two points. Well, they're going to need that. Frank is going to need someone from the perimeter to start to make a few so they can bring him out and then so they can tack him inside. So both coaches are missing things up at the moment. Sheehan hitting the side of the backboard. Muhlenberg brings it down. Six and a half minutes to go, and there's some heavy work off the boards. Springs and Cooks having a staring match. And it's against Albert Springs. Yeah, he's, he's got him for uh, hooking the defence down there when on a double screen away. The third Springs. foul on Albert Springs. Yeah, well, both now uh, Cooks on three and Springs on three. Worrying times for both coaches. Nine points for Albert Springs. Terry Hayes taking a breather behind him. Cook's kicking it out to Lowry from the top of the key. Muhlenberg does really well there. Presence of mind not to step out of court with it and to find a teammate. Wayne to Newsom, who's been kept quiet after uh, starting in a blaze of glory. This Open for the three, Ridgeway. Oh, and Ballarat should know what he can do from out there. But this is pretty entertaining, 40 and 30. Still, Ballarat haven't Baseline. really been able to uh, blow out the lead past 10 points in this quarter. Is it back to seven? No, Ridgeway misses. Oh, there's a foul. Muhlenberg ripping the arm of Keyes there when Keyes had the rebound. Well, you can see Ballarat went to his own there, left someone on the perimeter open. And you can see he gets away there. Frankson asking for a foul there after he shot the ball, and uh, Muhlenberg gets caught, and they're saying, well, what about the earlier one? So that hurts. So Muhlenberg now, three fouls. Keyes been perfect in this game. Not just from the stripe, I've liked his game at both ends. He's been very efficient, and he's, he's doing a great job for him. We'll see if Ballarat press up here. 12 points now for Grand Keys in the Grand this time. Half court, they're in the half court trap time. here. They go, they're trapping. Newsom forced up high by uh, Matt Nunn now, number eight. Seeing time. So Sutton Brown, the only Ballarat players not to see court time yet. Ridgeway misses. Good rebound, Peter Wayne. He's fouled as well, but couldn't get the basket. It's still a bit of enthusiasm. Yeah, they, trying to get the loose ball. Yeah, they, they had good good rebounding position there with three players on the inside there, and uh, Peter Wayne was able to get the ball, and he's been fouled. Important time for, for Frankston here to finish, get these two and then get a few stops before half time so they, they can chip away and get it under 10. They don't want to be going out so 15 points down at, at half time. Ballarat push the ball up the four. Campbell showed too much of that one to Springs. Getting it away before Cooks could grab it. So there's that first stop. 42-32. Four minutes to go. Wayne from the foul line. Now, there goes Nunn. Cooks the dump. Oh, great play in the keys. Great running of the floor from the Miners. Well, that's their strength. And, uh, 
Could have been easy for Cooks to have taken that himself. You can see they come here, Cooks goes up, sees the man underneath, dumps him off. Nice high percentage play. Peter Wayne has it blocked by Campbell. The Ballarat's junking their defence up here. They're playing a little bit of match-up zone themselves. Lowry just slowing it down. Lowry for three. Willenberg arrived just in time to put him off, but done well. Has Matt Nunn since he's come on, number eight. Even better now. Well, that was about uh, seven metres, that three-pointer. That's NBA uh, range, that's that. Right. I mean, he pulls a big rebound here and it comes out to him. He's well outside, nothing but net. You can see here Ballarat pushing up the floor again, going to look to trap here. They're not letting Frankston settle down to any sort of rhythm. They're chopping and changing their defences and having desired effect. Matthew Cotter in the game for the first time, number 10. 30 seconds, the ball coming off the foot of Lowry. But uh, Newsom sitting on the bench for Cotter to come in, and uh, the way he began, Newsom thought he was going to be the Blues trump card, but they've really tightened the screws on him, Ballarat. First to be sat down. Nice ball move up there from Springs to Wayne, who's the go to man at the moment. Yeah, well, that's Albert Springs' strength there is uh, he's a very good passer. And they're able to get the ball inside and get a cutter and make a nice basket. They've got to get some defensive stops at this end. They've, got, they've gone back to man-to-man -to -man now to try and change things a bit. Ballarat are going to run a set play here. Two and a half minutes to go in the first half. Hayes was shooting it before he had the ball. Cotter. Be the one they go to. There's the block from Cooks. Great hands. Two on two now. <laughs> Cooks left it behind. Gee, the bench has really played well for Ballarat. Matt Nunn, a quick five points. That's the thing about Ballarat. All their bench can shoot the ball if they're confident. It's going down for them. They like to run and shoot the basketball. Frankston has to get someone who's going to start to nail some buckets. And Ridgeway makes a big three when they really need it. It's his second three-pointer. They're three of 11 from beyond the arc. The Blues, the Miners, shooting it at 50%. Six of 12. But it's right on schedule for a 100-plus uh, points game for the Ballarat Miners. 49 with the 90 seconds to go in the first half. Gee, none. He is the man to give it to right now. And don't uh, the bench players love to see one of their own doing well? Well, they run a little isolation play there for him. Ballarat knows that they got Frankston. They have to come out and play him. They got after him. They isolated the man on the wing and they went to the someone who's got the hot hand. Cotter. Doesn't look like going down. Lose desperate to get back and stop here. They won't. Cook slams it down. Nice. What a brilliant last two and a half minutes this has been for Ballarat. Now it's out to 16 points. Cotter for three. The last two shots have been pretty ugly. That's oh, nice from Muhlenberg. Yeah, well, the wrong people are shooting the ball for Franks and for mine, and uh, they've got to get back to their, to their strengths where they normally have with Muhlenberg. Get him in the game, get Springs in the game, and Wayne. It's all Ballarat at the moment. Five seconds different between that game clock and the shot clock. Lowry. Calling the play. They'll milk it down here and they'll run a special play. They're going to go to none. I wouldn't be surprised if they look to get, get Hayes a three-point show away from the ball. None launches three. Now yeah, they've got all the time left, and that's Now he's going to get one-on-one -on -one here. With Springs, who've got a hand on it. Launched by Muhlenberg. But uh, Ballarat Miners, fantastic first half of basketball from them. They're halfway towards consecutive CBA championships. They're 14 points up. Gordy, I'm sure if you told Frankston and Eric Cooks will only have four points at half time, they would have said, Beauty, we'll take that. We'll be in front. Instead, they're 14 points down. How can they turn it around? 
Well, it's, it's quite simple. They've got to crack their defence up, they've got to loosen up offensively, and they've really got to go out here in these next two quarters and give them everything. I mean, it's, it's not a thing where they've got to panic. I mean, they can chip away and just get, get the lead down to under double figures by the end of the third quarter and then try and go on from there. But unless they rebound the ball, play some defence, loosen up and get some people who, who, can, who, who will shoot the ball well for them, they're going to struggle because Ballarat have got everything going for them with their defence. They're taking it down, shooting the ball with confidence. And at, at this, this stage, they're looking very good. It'll be interesting to see how they start this, this second half. Crooks gets it down to Keys. Good hands there from Blackley, knocking it away from Lowry. The Keys, top scorer in the game, 16 points and seven rebounds for the Ballarat Miners, number six. Just missing that time. Springs knocks it away, straight back to Keys. Hungrily going after it again here. Now look more desperate. And there's Hayes coming up with a loose ball. Well, Bill Runch, you wouldn't be happy about that. They've, they've got to get the loose ball. They've got to rebound the ball. If they're going to make Ballarat miss, they better make sure they don't give him second shots. Hayes misses the three-pointer. Newsom. Blackley on his left. He's got Muhlenberg on his right. He just jams straight into Hayes' chest. Yeah, well, that's good defense there by Hayes. You can see here, he picks him here. He sees he puts a little move on here. Hayes gets there, makes the referee make a call. Was he moving across? Was it a block charge? You be the judge. I think we've shown a little bit more uh, faith in his number four, Muhlenberg, and given it to him. But uh, here he is pulling the rebound down. So, he's come up empty both times, Ballarat. Blinks and have to capitalise here. If they're going to miss, they're going to come down and, and punish him at the other end. Blackley, three-pointer, doesn't go. He dies back after it, though. It came loose to Campbell, who sets away. Cooks. Just sense a lot of the Franks' players. You look on their faces, they're pretty, pretty drawn. They're going to have to pick up here and really make a go at it. So first points of the second half. With the Miners. Oh, Larry, superb hands, and then Blackley fouls him. Could even have been a, uh, a professional foul. But we can see here, great steal here. Blackley comes over here. Does he make a, a play at the ball, or was it a deliberate, <laughs> deliberate push? Larry's not too happy about it. He's, he's saying to the referee, hey. Campbell for two. Perfect start to this half for the Miners. Can't let him catch and shoot. You've got to make him put the ball on the floor. I've also been impressed with uh, Matt Campbell's defence. He's on, on Muhlenberg and he's done a very good job on him. There he is. Hands up. Troy Muhlenberg. Just into the baseline a lot. Had to make the tough shot. Hasn't as yet. And Lowry like lightning. Foul by Blackley. Second time in about 30 seconds. You, you could put that down to Matt Campbell's defense again. You could see him there. He worked very hard on, on Muhlenberg, making he took a poor shot. They got the rebound, broke to the other end. Newsom is uh, replaced by Ridgeway. Blues top scorer with 10 points. You can't let him the inbounds all the way to Campbell. See, Campbell did a very good job on Andrew Gaze a few weeks ago in the, uh, the VBA finals where he kept Andrew to a reasonable margin. Is Ballarat beaten in the VBA grand final by Geelong? But they beat, beat Melbourne, Melbourne, beat Melbourne route. in the semi final. That is a really tough competition between Basketball Association. Lowry. Almost tipped back in by Cooks. You can see the hunger though of Ballarat. You know, they're after, they're getting the loose ball. You can see Bill Runchy over there on the side with his hands on his hips. He'd be very disappointed with the way the boys are rebounding the ball at the moment. Well, that step doesn't bear looking at if you're a Frankston fan. 19 boards down. There's the foul on the hooks. You can and see some frustration coming out here. You can see some frustration because uh, McQuiston here. McQuiston, watch it here. He doesn't really, he goes past him, he just rips into him. He's, and he's been 
Cooks. Call for a technical foul, Cooks, in his retaliation there. Remember we spoke earlier on how he had a, a run in with Ridgeway and he was lucky to get away with it there. And now, he, now it's neutralised the, the call. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if Brendan Joyce doesn't bring him out just to settle him down a bit here. He's in his fourth here. He's pretty upset. But he's just got to play the game. Let the referees blow the call. A wealth of experience, 33 years of age behind him. There's the nice block coming from Springs. Maybe this will turn things around a little for the Blues. He step out of court, he did there, Blackley, under pressure. Well, both teams here starting to get a little bit emotionally involved. You can see that Brendan Joyce has taken Cooks out just to settle him down yeah, a little bit. Cooks had a little word in Scott Butler's ear too as he sat down. I think Brendan Joyce did as well. been four points scored in this second half which is uh, nearly four minutes old they've all been scored by Ballarat An important stop for the baseline. Well, Brendan Joyce is getting upset here on the sideline because he's asking the boys to move the ball around and make him pay make him play some defense for a while then penetrate on him. Muhlenberg's gritting his teeth here Campbell again forcing him wide but this time knocked down by Troy Muhlenberg. He's got eight points. Well, he forced him the way he wanted him to go, and he made a tough shot. Frankston's going to need a lot more of that from Muhlenberg if they're going to get back into this game. Frankston improved their shooting a little bit in the second quarter, up from 29% to 35.5. Ballarat missing. Not quite shooting it as well as they were early. 50% for this them. Help Muhlenberg misses the three-point attempt. Keys feeds it out to Lowry. Lowry's controlled the tempo of the game very well for his team. The Ballarat seem like they're struggling a little bit now too with, uh, with Cooks out and Keys out. Oh, sorry, Keys is in there with Cooks has gone out. Springs again guarding Lowry. Hayes on the baseline. Good. See, good penetration there again. Draws the defense. Dishes off. You can no, see here, Lowry gets into the paint, draws the D, dishes off to Hayes, makes a nice basket. The question comes in late and gets a blocking foul. Wayne in for Blackley for Frankston. Ballarat takes the break. Ballarat uh, Sheen's come in. That's down for a three-point play. That's the player substituted. Ballarat got their three guards on here and they're looking to trap a little bit, so they're going to go quick again. Got a very mobile group on now here. Oh, great help defence coming from Hayes there as Ridgeway got around Keys. Muhlenberg starting to find the range. And that's a good sign for Frankston. Ballarat got a small group on, but they're going to look to, to press and, and really scrap it up a little bit. Sheehan, being guarded by Newsom. Larry takes on Wayne. Springs stops his push to the basket, and there's Keyes, his first points in the second half. He's got 18 for the game. Well, he's, he's been playing a very nice game for him, and they needed that bucket there. And Wayne popping it up over the top. There's a, few, Matt there's a few signs starting to go for Frank, so they're starting to make a few shots here. So if they can get a few stops, get the game close here, because they haven't really played that well so far, the game of basketball can swing. Well, this is going basket for basket at the moment, but should Ballarat come up empty? One or two trips down the floor. Frankson might get a sniff. Nice dump inside. Campbell gets another chance. And coming down. Fake there, drawing the foul from Ridgeway. You know, Frankston appealing there for a charge call on that Campbell when he passed off there. We weren't too happy about that. That was a foul against Mark Ridgeway. Ballarat is scrapping very well though. Campbell on the line. I think Bill Runch is a little bit frustrated over there with the referees. He feels like he's not getting uh, the calls at the both ends. Nineteen year old Matt Campbell playing the game of his life here. 
Well, he's been playing well for him for most of the year. Yeah, uh, he's been getting stronger and stronger as the year's gone on. Leads 19 points now. It's Muhlenberg. Campbell getting a foul call on him there. That's just the second team foul in the quarter on the Ballarat Miners already. Frankston Blues have five team fouls. Still six minutes to go in the half. Hayes there, the foul on Springs. The referees are starting to blow the game a little bit tighter here. Uh, Northfield is getting a little bit away, so they're going to bring the boys back in, into where they should be. Springs up front. Brendan Joyce also asked for the defence to pick up on Muhlenberg because he's starting to find his touch. He's guarding him here. Springs. Hayes stopping, taking it to the hole. Wayne gets his own board yeah. back. Right. Now they've got to get a stop. So far it's gone basket for basket in this second half. Thanks for giving a bit of their own medicine. Down to the offensive boards. Sheehan oh, getting a two-point basket. Sheehan, five points in the game. Bit of urgency about the Frankston Blues here. Reese Newsom from the foul line short. They've got another offensive board. Great play, Albert Springs, who's fouled by Eric Hayes. Yeah, but Ballarat wouldn't be uh, too upset about that because all Frankston's offense at the moment is on the floor. They're, they're dribbling the ball too much, and if they're going to put it on the floor, Ballarat have the more athletic plays to defend that. So that's exactly the way they want to play. Faces a little bit more. Now yeah, oh, this will help. So, no, from Newsom. Keys. Goes back to Sheehan. Oh, they leave Keys on his own. Well, I don't know, they forgot about what they were doing there. Poor transition defense, but heads up play there by Sheehan. He recognized the defense, turned his head for a nice little log pass for an easy layup. So it's 17 points still in favor of Ballarat. Campbell and Muhlenberg throws it with his back to the basket. Muhlenberg looking at the referee, but I thought that was good defense by Campbell. He held his ground. Hayes into Keys again in the low post. Not a third time, surely. Muhlenberg with it. The Franks are certainly trying to run a little bit more now. A bit more Strong, early. Albert Springs. It's called a charge. No basket. Oh, I thought that was tough. Here we we're seeing here some penetration. He takes off. Well, he looks like he's there. Is he under the basket or is he out from it? This is the toughest thing in basketball. Is it a charge? Is it a block? The referee has to make a split, split session decision. And uh, sometimes they get it right, sometimes they get it wrong. Five second violation. Turnover. Will Runchy will be happy with that. Didn't get the ball in five seconds. Both the coaches are uh, fairly vocal to the referees. But that's pressure. Wise, it's just slowed down a little bit. Frankston can exploit this. They're still in this game. Wayne should have dished it off to Springs. He drew the defense, Peter Wayne. It's consecutive charge calls. So, right now, we can see the track coming. The track coming. coming. Lowry with 15 seconds on the shot clock. Comes out from the foul line, stuck back by Keyes. He's got 20 points now. Well, we've been saying it all night about those rebounds. Three-pointer misses, Newsom getting the rebound. 
Starting to get a few offensive boards at least, but they're just going basket for basket at the moment. Yeah, but they extended up the floor a little bit, so trying to trying to up, up the tempo a little bit. And they got the turnover they wanted. Yes, Campbell knew he was right on the uh, sideline. Bad pass from Sheehan. Going all the way, Blackley. So consecutive baskets. And uh, substitution, Lowry goes out and Sutton comes on. Number 20, the 20 year old Daniel Sutton in the guard position is Blackley driving on keys. Bit of a mismatch there. Now, can they get a stop here? Hayes goes hard. Tremendous oh, tremendous board from Mühlenberg. Brendan Joyce subbed out Lowry there, and he's, he's giving him a blow with it. I think because he let um, Blackley go to the hole. Yeah, well, he's going to give him a rest and, and get the, get a good three minutes break, and then he'll have him to come out and lead the team in the last quarter. Newsom. Hayes tries to go with him. Oh, yeah. It's there. So the last two minutes of the second quarter belonged to Ballarat and they blew it out to 14 points. Now it's the Miners who have to hold out the Blues here. The Franks are trying to get the get control of the game. But oh, doesn't that hurt you? Sutton comes into the game, hits his... Uh, sorry, it's not Sutton. Dion Collard. Dion Collard, sorry. Just when you think you're getting somewhere beaten and they do that to you, that really hurts. There's the difference, 14 points. For me, Frankston are looking better, though. They've upped yep. their tempo, and now they're taking it down around. Collard to Keyes. Well, it doesn't matter how tough the shot is. Grant Keyes has had no problems tonight. Well, that was a great post move. Looked on the inside, spun baseline, and made a very tough shot from behind the back there. Way short. Keys getting the board. He's doing it all, both ends. Collard. Sits it away to Hayes, who shoots it with two seconds oh. to go, and not too far away either. So the Ballarat fans chanting. The third CBA championship on the way for Ballarat. Well, a little bit better pass from Campbell, and Lowry would have got the first points of the fourth quarter. But Bayside get it. They come up with a score here and get the momentum starting to go their way. They come get a few stops. And there goes Blackley hard. Rebound from Cooks. Plenty of time to regain his equilibrium on the bench after he got a little bit heated with things out there. Hayes thought about shooting that. Keys, 26 points. Yeah, good penetration there by Hayes and dished off the Keys for a nice basket. Blackley goes hard again and then swings a backhander at Keys, who sets away Hayes, who travels around Muhlenberg. Blackley driven hard twice and hasn't scored and got a bit frustrated. Illawarra 113, Magic 108, And Bill Runchy has, uh, has taken out Blackley here and, and he's brought in young Cotter to see if he can spark a little bit of tempo. He's a little firebrand who likes to get up and get after him defensively, and he's trying to ignite him with a bit of spark. Nice backdoor yeah. play there, and a foul. The skipper Ridgeway may inspire something from his team. He goes to the line to shoot the bonus. Hayes, call for the foul, just his second. Yeah, he just got caught there. A little backdoor play. It's looking a lot like the women's final, Gordy. Every time the, the trailing team mounts some sort of push, the team that have controlled the game all day has come back and hit the baskets. Not that time, though, and Campbell, and he's the one that's knocked it out of court. Yeah, you're right. And uh, Franks are going to have to change that uh, with, some, with some defense and, and find a few people to get a hot hand. They'll be looking to this guy to do that. Springs over the top of Cooks. Well, that's his tough game, but he hasn't really had the ball there much tonight. And Bobby had to look to push it in there a bit. 
make a few things happen for them. Now the Frankston fans chant for a bit of D from their Blues. Cooks against Muhlenberg. Oh, made the impossible look very easy. Well, that's his toughest spot on that low block there, and they'll look to give it to him there all night. Cotter. Dummy run, gave it back to Muhlenberg. Houston had it wrenched out of his hands by Cooks. You could see good Ballarat uh, help defence there. When he put the ball on the floor, there was plenty of help from the weak side. And that's, that's the reason they've got this lead. It's, it's, it's from their defence. And they're questioning the referees all the time. They did it just before the restart here at three-quarter time. And then Springs questioning the referee, John Payne, while the play was going on around him. Well, you can see here that Muhlenberg was bodying up, pushing at him, and the referee calls the foul. Let a little bit go early there, then called the foul. But it's, it's funny because Frankston, that's the way that they beat teams throughout the year, and Ballarat's given them their own medicine here tonight. They're controlling the tempo. Sheehan has replaced Campbell, and there's the lob into Keyes, knocked away by Muhlenberg. Newsom, beautiful to the running. Springs at full pace. Basket will count. Another bonus free throw coming up. I just hope we see her again. Well, if anybody can come from behind and snatch an improbable victory, it's the Frankston Blues. Well, they did it uh, earlier in the national playoffs. Last week it was a bit of an unusual game for them in that they led all night. They, they do have the, the potential to start to get hot from the three-point line. You've got to know. All of their players can do that. 14 points. They cut the deficit to 12. So 12 points the difference. The next couple of Nine, minutes are going to be very important here. We'll get a couple of stops here and get it under, under double figures. Ballarat might tighten up a little bit. Springs doing a good job on Lowry. Keys handing it off to Hayes. Charge, Charge call. Off to uh, Cooks, rather. Charge foul called against Keys. Yeah, well, they look to try and get Cooks the ball inside there, and, and Keys got the guy in the closeout. But there's some good help here from Frankston. So Keys has four fouls. Here's one for you, Blues. Let's see what you can do. Nine minutes to go there. They should look to go at him as well. Way. It sets the screen for a very quick Bruce Newsom. Oh, a jam and a half from Springs. Well, the fans That's got to inspire go. something. That's exactly what you can see here. Ridgeway goes, throws it, loses a handle on it. Springs gets up there and jams it over the top of Cooks. Hayes oh, answers back. No, it's Lowry with the drive. Yeah, equally nice drive there. A little bit of a tipsy doodle there for a nice bucket. Game starting to hot up again. Still plenty of time left. 8 15. Cotter. Campbell guarding him. Hayes now looking after Muhlenberg. Taking it inside anyway, but they had no one there to get the rebound. Nice block there by uh, Cooks there in the help. Nally lob. Cooks from Campbell. Yeah, caught him on the transition D there. Ballarat, no, that was a big play too. Because they Frankston have been coming back at him. They pull it back to 14. Muhlenberg slips away from Hayes. Oh, good work from Cooks. Secondly with the rebound, firstly in forcing the uh, shot wide. And he gets a foul as well. The impressive thing here is the Ballarat help defense. They made, they made Muhlenberg change his shot. And they've been doing that all night. Five fouls now on Muhlenberg. Five fouls, Troy Muhlenberg. Don't be surprised here if uh, they run a, a clear out here so they, they isolate. And it'll Easy be a little lob pass again. Very good coaching there by Brendan Joyce. Recognised the five foul situation. He's matched up on Cook, so they post him up. They'll go at him. Springs tried to keep it alive. 
but it's Sheehan who sets Campbell away. They're running to victory now in the Ballarat Miners with just under seven minutes to go. Muhlenberg uh, forcing a little bit up there too, probably starting to hit the panic button a little bit early. The two nets. Exactly what happened, see? Poor like shot, that. Ballarat get the ball, burn you with a fast break basket. Eight nothing run from the Miners, who can smell victory now. Muhlenberg back for three from Newsom. Timely to say the least. We're gonna need some more of those. Newsom has 15 points. And it was he who knocked the ball away from the cutting haze. You can just see Ballarat though, getting Cooks into that low post position with Muhlenberg on him and he looked attacking. Benson just gone to a zone here. And it's Springs that has to guard Hooks there and does a good job of it. The Blues ball. A little bit more desperation there on the boards from Frankston. Ridgeway goes out. Blackley comes in. Ridgeway's out. Well, I think Blackley should keep taking it to the hole like he did at the start of the quarter. He came up without any points, but... Well, he's had a good rest, so he should be pretty fresh to come in here and give him that, that spark that they need. Peter Wayne can shoot it. Oh, banks it in with the running right hand. Not Peter Wayne's strength there to put it on the floor, but he's made a big basket for him. No, oh, they've always come back, and Campbell has played a brilliant. Well, <laughs> all but five minutes of basketball. If he can finish it off, he's been one of their best. You've got to give credit to Ballarat, though. All year they've been prepared to stand up and take that shot and they've made most of it. Wayne couldn't get the rebound because of Eric Cooks. Going the whole way, knocking it down. They're growing in confidence. Yeah, good double down on Muhlenberg at the other end led to a fast break. Sheehan with that basket. And a three-pointer that time for oh, Springs. Basket won't count. Things aren't looking good for Frankston here. They've, uh, they've got to do something. They've got to make something happen here. Yeah. Probably a sign of things for Frankston. Everything's been short for him tonight. It's just not happening. Well, bonus free throws. Maybe they can get themselves back in there. Draw the fouls from the Miners. See Ballarat starting to spread the floor, making them chase them. They'll open it up, shoot, use a bit of clock, and then they'll just pick someone out. Frankston is switching everything. Campbell oh, had two looks in the hole, that basketball, and he got the rebound. Perhaps some of the lesser lights tonight from uh, Ballarat have been the ones that have led this for them, the likes of uh, Campbell and Keyes. Lowry's just controlled it so well from the point. That's been the team's strength all year, Peter. They, they have a, a long bench and they, Brendan Joyce plays a, puts a lot of uh, emphasis on, on playing the team basketball and those players are, have, have come in and done the job for them. Peter Wayne hanging all over. Well, Grant Keyes there. Times Wayne. when teams have shut down the more fancy players, the Australian players have stood up and got the job done for them. Keys, Campbell. <laughs> Keys confident to dribble it around there. And as the season's gone on, Sheen's been doing a very good job for him as well. Here goes Campbell to uh, dump it in there. But uh, Wayne was in the way. And the steal almost. Cooks. Newsom, 19 points. Well, he's been fighting all night for him. He's been one of their better players, and, and he hasn't certainly hasn't thrown the towel in. He's going right down to the wire. Every trip down the floor from Ballarat, though, it's a 25-second offense. And uh, that clock, just three minutes left on it for 
the Blues. We get a steal, the steal here. Blackley in the open floor. Oh, the follow-up goes from Springs. Difference is 11. Three minutes left. I just wonder if they took the foot off the gas a little bit early. Ballarat. Well, Brendan Joyce has brought in uh, Hayes to a bit more quickness there. He's going to run a set play here to see if they can get, get a score in a certain spot. And we're going to look to post up Cooks inside here. Cooks being guarded by Muhlenberg, who's on five fouls. 2.25 to go, just two seconds on the shot clock. Oh, oh stuck back in. Cooks. Hey, he's got better as the game's gone on. If They've got a spot up to the threes now. If something's going to stop a run, a rebound dunk, he's going to do it. And there he's putting the defence on Wayne. Finding the open man, Muhlenberg. Two minutes to go. 11 points the difference. And here's the... Larry got the shot away with two seconds to go. And the rebound stick back coming from Eric Cooks. Nice bit of athleticism there. Cooks got 10 points in the second half. He got frustrated for a little while, but uh, had a long rest on the bench, calmed himself down. And there's the block blocking foul called against Wayne. To the line goes Grant Keys. Bill Runch is instructing his plays. He's saying, fellas, we've got a foul. You can see here, he takes off. Peter Wayne comes and across. And a timeout call by the baseline for a blocking with foul. 90 seconds left. So Bill Runchy calls his final timeout with 92 seconds to go in the grand final. It's do or die for the Frankston team. This all Victorian grand final. We're certainly going to tell them that they uh, they're going to have to, to foul every every time they can and make uh, Ballarat close the game out on the foul line. Like you said, Peter, they're probably going to be blazing away from the three point line at the other end. Bubbly in this huddle. Brendan Joyce coaches the way he played, with a lot of emotion, with a lot of heart, throws everything into it. Always got something to say, same as when he was a player. He was a real leader out there, a hustler, real determined. And he's, he's done not a bad record as a coach either in his third season. Looks like two championships. Well, he comes from good stable, from the Nutter Wadding stable. A lot of good coaches. Alan Black is another one coming out there to play with Barry Barnes. So the pedigree's there. Grant Keys, what a night he's had. And uh, he might sit and watch the rest from the bench. He's certainly done his job. 26 points for him. Perfect from the line, and they certainly got inside a lot more. As, uh, well, I don't know, shooting the three pointers from Albert is going to be the way to go. He's done it once tonight, but that might be his quota. I mean, uh, Brendan Joyce has taken Grant out, just to give him a little bit more mobility out there to defend the people who are going to shoot the threes. Because Frankston has got all, all three-point shooters out there at the moment. Maybe Albert's not a great three-point shooter, but he's taking him out for that reason, not because he hasn't been playing well. Oh, Eric Hayes, loved in Ballarat. They travelled down the road to Bendigo last year to watch their team take the championship in beating uh, Cairns. And a lot of them have travelled up the Hume to Sydney. Well, they're going to create history here. I don't think any other team's got back-to-back. -back. There's a three-pointer going down from Muhlenberg with uh, 67 seconds to go. Maybe a little bit uh, too late. They're going to have to try and foul early here to take the time off the clock. 
Plenty of high fives for Matt Sheehan, who sits down. Campbell in, and Matt Nunn has uh, come into the game, and he hit a quick fire seven points at the end of the second half, which really iced that half of basketball for the Ballarat Miners. Shows you how much depth they've got if a player comes on and plays like that and doesn't get to play uh, so much in the following quarters, but they've got a lot of depth, Ballarat, and uh, they're going to be deserved winners tonight. Coming up short with both. Not much help from the legs there. The 27 year old. As Muhlenberg shoots another three. Oh. Almost for Springs. Look up the floor, there's a dunk on here. Watch this. Oh. Eric Hayes. Oh. Emphatically it finishing it off. And if my memory serves me correctly, it might have been something like that this time last year as well. There's no better way to finish it off with a dunk. Newsom misses. They've got all but two seconds on the game clock. Makes this. This will be... Newsom holding uh, Cooks away from the boards. And all the time left for the Blues to score. But to finish second here. And all the Ballarat players are up, and deservedly so. They've, had, they've played very well tonight. And none's going to go down to the line. Champions again. Just waiting for the full stop to be put on another successful year for the Ballarat Miners. Brendan Joyce is going to bring out all his starters here, and he's going to so the crowd can appreciate the way his players are playing. Plus, he's going to give a couple of the guys that have trained all year and, and have also contributed to this team's performance because they need these players to be at practice, and these will be the players of the future for Ballarat. And just to be on here and taste this is going to be real fun for them. Sutton, Nunn, Copping, Brown, and Cooks is the five. A lot of celebrations going on under the Ballarat bench, and uh, you'd expect that at this time. And they're going to get the last shot. Or oh, maybe not. Three points. No, and that's the story of Frankston's Ladies championship dreams. Well, we spoke, we spoke about uh, the game earlier. We said if Ballarat can get around the 100-point mark, they're going to be hard to beat. Frankston, we're going to have to keep them in the low 90s to make it a game. And Ballarat were just too good with their strong defence, their offence. They weren't scared to shoot it and run it, and that's the way they've played all year, and they're deserved winners. A little bit of jubilation in there, Pete, and a whole season of very hard work. Well, in the two seasons that the CBA Premiership has been a national championship, Ballarat have won it. 94, now 95, and since 1981, the Siebel CBA Premiership has never been won in consecutive years. And Ballarat, they've been into the grand final six of the seven years and now have got three championships to show from it. They're now starting to get some reward, having finished runners-up three years in a row back in the early 90s. Well, they also got grand final experience, haven't they? And they played like that tonight. Tonight for them was just another game. They went out there, they played loose, they were prepared to to, to shoot the ball well, from the perimeter, they were prepared to run it. And when, when you play like that, you play with that confidence, as well, it's going to be we tough to beat. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been They're going to say cutting down the net the until after the they've been presented with their winner's watches. And, of course, the team take the A.J. Flacus Cup. CBA President Adrian Davies well, has made the presentation of the awards. Now Jason Flacus, the handover, what they've been playing for. The A.J. Flacus Cup and well, First of all, I'd like to thank everybody in Sydney for coming out to tonight's game. And uh, I think it's fantastic that the CBA come to Sydney to show you the high level of basketball. It is the highest level of basketball under the NBL. There's no doubt about it. You saw some great players tonight. I'd also like to thank Frankston. They've been the toughest team we played all year. And it was great to see them and us in the final. I really believe we're the best two teams out of those 36 teams in the CBA.
just with my team. It's, uh, I'm just so proud of this team. It, as uh, most people involved in sport know how difficult it is to try and win a grand final twice back to back. And you, you probably don't have to work any harder, but you've got to work just as hard as you did last year. And believe me, these guys put out so much and they deserve this. Fellas, you deserve it. Magnificent. Thank you. Grant Keys, 28 points, 11 rebounds, a deserved MVP. Uh, must really put the icing on the cake to get a consecutive national championship and play a game personally like that. Oh, yeah, it's probably a high point of my career so far, and uh, it's, yeah, it's probably just as good as last year. It's, it's, it's a great feeling, yeah. Can you, uh, you know, quantify what felt the better? You know, was it harder winning consecutive championships? Yeah, well, last year we, we didn't know much about Cairns. Um, this year we've already played Bayside five or six times, so we know each other a lot more. It, it, was, a, it was a different task, but um, yeah, we, we were pretty happy. How did you do it? I mean, they beat you twice in Ballarat, but you come up to yeah. Sydney here and, and win by 15 points. Oh, yeah, well, um, last time we played them, we had a bit of trouble with their zone defence, so we've been uh, working on that all week long, and, and uh, it's paid dividends this week. Yeah. You seemed right from the start to be more attuned with the grand final atmosphere, having played six out of seven. Uh, do you think that was a factor with Frankston being here for the first time? Oh, yeah. Well, we only played the uh, VBA grand final a couple of weeks back, and that was pretty big for us. And we did it last year, so we, we had the experience, I suppose. But every grand final, you've got to come out for it, and it, it's a task coming out. Yeah. What sort of reception is waiting for you back in Ballarat? Uh, hopefully, hopefully a big one, but uh, we'll have to wait and see for that. <laughs> Gordy McLeod, uh, you know, uh, you expected them, I think, to win, even though you didn't make, make a tip. Uh, they seemed to just have what it took in the big game. Yeah, well, you know, they've been a very good running team all year, and their athleticism really showed out tonight. And it was very important for Frankston to get off a good start and to, and to shut down their running game. But uh, for me, Ballarat beat Frankston at their own game. They come out defensively. They got after him all over the floor. I felt that uh, Brendan Joyce had done his homework very well and he'd worked out how to, to, sh to slow Frankston down in the half court and to get his team running. And that's the way he wanted to play. He knew he had the horses out there going. He knew he had the depth in the team. He knew the team were, were playing confidently, like they've been saying. They've been playing in finals before. They played in the VBA final. Very well coached. The players played very well as a team, had a lot of depth. And the thing with Ballarat all year has been that it hasn't been one play that's won it for them, it's been a number. And tonight, they all showed that. Matt Campbell, Grant Keyes come out and had a great game. And Damon Lowry just stealing the limelight there at the finish. Gordy, thanks very much for your contribution over the last two weeks and to a fantastic uh, year for you personally and uh, your junior charges. But, uh, on behalf of uh, Gordy McLeod, uh, Leanne Grantham, who joined me through the Women's National Basketball League season, we've covered the best part of 30 games for you on ABC Sport over the, uh, the winter months. We hope you've enjoyed it. We hope you'll be back with us in season 1996. From uh, Liverpool, the Whitlam Entertainment Centre, it's Peter G saying goodbye. <laughs>